Welcome, welcome to MedMeds. Now we are going to study uh, meningitis. It's a commonest CNS infection. Actually, it means that there are inflammation of the meninges. The and the causative organisms these range from viruses, to bacteria, to mycobacteria. The presentation remains the same, but the difference in the severity of the condition or the duration of the illness. So, what is the commonest presentation? How we segregate this into the cause is patient usually has a triad of headache, vomiting, and the signs of meningitis. Means stay for uh, rigid neck. And there are all the symptoms as well. But these are usually the triad headache, vomiting, and the morning stiffness. So if patients come to you with such symptoms, how we examine such a patient? First, you know, the patient has ardor sensorium. He or she is irritable. Mm -hmm. Temperature is usually, the patient is febrile. Usually greater than one or two liter Fahrenheit. The pulse accordingly. The patient has tachycardia. And then the neck rigidity. And then the other signs of meningeal irritation. The Kernick sign. And the Brazil skin sign. These are positive. Now sometimes in the cases if there is uh, also involvement of the brain stem then we can get brain stem signs in the form of uh, constricted pupils. Otherwise this is the usual presentation. The cranial nerve palsies usually not and there is no other CNS abnormality. Now, how to proceed for the workup of such a patient or a patient of suspected meningitis? Start with the basic workup, the baseline. We get a full blood count done. The CBC, the total leukocyte count, the WNC count is usually raised because there is infection. And the predominance, if there is bacterial infection, then there are predominantly neutrophils are raised. And if this is chronic, chronic infection like tuberculosis, then there are predominance of the lymphocytes. Then, as we know, that streptococcus pneumonia is one of the causes of meningitis. So we consider the throat culture for streptococcus pneumonia. A patient having or if we suspect tuberculous meningitis then we can get a chest x-ray for any primary lesion. And for such a patient, we can also send the sputum for acid fast bacilli. So these are the usual workup uh, that we do. For, uh, and the exact, to find the cause, the exact investigation is the CSF analysis. So, in the cases, if on the CSF analysis, the total leukocyte count is raised and predominantly the neutrophils and it is raised up to 1000 into 10 raised per 6 cells per liter, 
with the proteins these are increased as far as uh, they are compared with the serum proteins and there is decrease in the sugar levels this is a picture of typical bacterial meningitis the leukocytes are based predominance of the neutrophils because the bacterial uh, proteins the total proteins are raised and the proteins these bacteria they have consumed the glucose the glucose levels are down then the wire the tlc is raised but not that much and in this condition the proteins and the glucose both are normal this points toward having a viral cause of meningitis if a patient has such symptoms as we have discussed and the series of analysis it shows the tlc of about 5000 cells per liter and the protein are raised the glucose is down then this is a picture of tuberculous meningitis and here we can also send the csf fluid for culture to get mycobacterium tuberculosis so this is how we segregate all the three causes if the there is too much raised uh, tlc proteins are raised and the glucose are consumed this is bacterial now there is a variation that the tlc is only 5000 but the protein are raised glucose is mean this is this is a bacterial cause but this is the tuberculous one and if in the case of uh, viral the tlc is raised but the protein and the glucose these are normal that points toward the viral cause now according to the this picture we treat the patient so one by one we are going to do it in the cases of bacterial meningitis now empirically after sending a culture we start the patient with third generation cephalosporin this usually uh, ceftriaxone or ceftriaxone empirical treatment now when the result of the culture comes it shows that the patient is penicillin resistant then we add vancomycin or rifampicin and if the patient has meningitis and there is history of diabetes or alcoholism then we suspect or we get from the culture report listeria monocytogenes then we continue with the same empirical treatment of third generation cephalosporin but we add amoxicillin or cordramoxazole and then if we have the picture of tuberculous meningitis now it is said that in any case of or uh, in the cases of to the uh, bacterial meningitis use of steroids it leads to better outcome in the form of no remnant neurological sequelae
no permanent neurological damage. So that's why for every uh, bacterial meningitis, we tend to use steroid for the uh, first few days. This is all about the patient with uh, a diagnosed case of bacterial meningitis. So how we treat patients with viral meningitis? With the viral meningitis, there is no specific treatment because it is a self-limiting illness. Or sometimes an antiviral can be used in the form. Usually, we use acyclovir if we tend to. But if the diagnosis is viral. Is uh, viral meningitis, then there is no specific treatment. Only the symptomatic treatment we use to give the patient has headache, the patient has fever, we tend to give the antipyretics, antiemetics. Then the last one, tuberculous meningitis. We start with the uh, anti tuberculous therapy as we used to uh, do in the pulmonary tuberculosis, duration is prolonged. First two months, the intensive therapy with the four drugs, rifampicin, isoniazid, pyrazidamide, and intermetol. First two months. And the next 10 months, we use two drugs, rifampicin and isoniazid. And then, in the first three months, we tend to use oral steroids. Practice long. Sixty milligram per day for three weeks, and then we taper. So that's all about uh, meningitis. Thank you.